Hi guys, welcome back to the Fired Up Podcast. This is the place to come for all things Flames International Burn Conference. Let's get into it. Faith on fire. If you didn't know, Flames is unlike any other conference out there. Mm -hmm. We have we have over three days this year. So that means we've got way more time with each other, fellowshipping with each other and in the presence of God and everything that God wants to do uh, through and at Flames. One of the major things that sets Flames apart is mm. our teaching. Yes. Would you agree? Mm. First of all, did you always have the teaching sessions from the beginning? Yes, we did, actually. Yeah, yeah. we did. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah, that's not done. something that's always done. So where did that come from? And did you guys, when the apostle said, I want to, you know, the hymn is Greek and his Hebrews. Yeah. When he said, I want to teach, did you say, ah, I don't know? Yes. <laughs> I, I, don't say yes I love we, the honesty. We need it. <laughs> You know, we what, need it. something that was quite interesting about 2019 that's mm. different now is Apostle didn't take a lot of teaching sessions in mm. 2019. Yeah, yeah. So many we had Apostle there is a we had, had Apostle Ryan even take a oh, very interesting had, session. Uh, I remember this so vividly. He took something about ministry in the digital space. Right. Wow. Yeah. Was so Love that. Yes. Yeah. He broke it down to how ministry can actually function in that in space. That space. Wow. Yeah. And he is a master of that. Let's be clear. Yeah. 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 He's, he has, yeah. He's the digital, digital Apostle. He is, <laughs> he is the digital <laughs> Apostle. Yeah. Yeah. So, so was that a part of the vision? Like when God said you got to do this thing, I want you to ignite people. Right. Was that in from the beginning one of the things that we know our, our mandate as a church is educate mm-hmm. the church mm-hmm. empower the church mm-hmm. and empower the people so we we take the education part very seriously very and because that is my discipline that is my path so I decided mm-hmm. to you know what um, I mean there are a lot of conferences in the UK what makes our different as different mm-hmm. yep. the fact that we go hard on, on teaching and, and mm-hmm. I think it makes us different so yes and that and like you mentioned I wasn't really into this thing 100 like that from the mm-hmm. beginning but as we progressed with time we mm-hmm. felt there was a need to go you know from milk to bone from exactly. bone from milk from milk to meat, meat. from meat to bone meat. from yeah. bone to stone from yeah. stone to iron Why? Come on. Why? Why? Yes, my dear. You haven't taught at Flames yet. Oh, Last thing you did, something. Yeah, she did a wisdom cafe. No, right. but you haven't taught at Flames. Yeah, 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 yeah. You had what I said. Oh. We have many teachers and preachers in our house. Yes. I want to ask you about the women's stuff. So it's interesting that you mentioned, we say like we're having a whole women's session today, but I want to pick up on what you said. You've had women from the very beginning. Yes, like did. You don't see that loads um, especially women from America mm-hmm. coming. That is something I've never seen before. Mm. I wish I was saved at the time. I would have loved to listen <laughs> now. But I'm excited for this year as well. Why is it so important to have women teachers? Oh, unfortunately, on this side of the world, I guess we don't have many. We have some, don't get me wrong, we have some. And I guess the church hasn't found a way of embracing their voices, even though they had them within the house. Mm. So don't get me wrong. There are many teachers there that are just waiting to be heard. Mm. But I feel that there's some push that they need. I feel like in America, they've kind of got that. There's a platform to allow the women to speak and be themselves and express their ministries. But here, we're still nursing that ground. For some people, they still fight against women preaching and speaking and teaching. So we as a church, we believe that women, we want you to speak. We want you to use your voice. Don't muzzle up, speak. Be what God has called you to be amongst those five holds. Step out. Mm-hmm. So that's what the platform has been created for. It's always been there. So mm-hmm. I guess this women now coming back. Imagine we're talking about five years ago when we started, we had women. Mm-hmm. Five years later, mm-hmm. as we're doing our anniversary, we're bringing back the woman. I yeah. love that because in between that time, we never really had that. Mm-hmm. So we've now said, no, we need a woman minister to come from abroad possibly to stir up the fire but also here as well recognizing the voices and the graces that we have here and bring them up and say ladies again as we've been saying for some time now it's time to arise yeah. it's time to step up in your ministries mm-hmm. don't let anybody dim your light come up and do what you have to do each time you feel like it's being dimmed reignite it again that's mm-hmm. where the fire and the flame comes on fan your flame use your voice speak release your sound mm-hmm. and that's what we're coming to do that time we're coming to do what we call feminine and fire yeah. Yes. Stir your feminine side. Yes, look beautiful, but mm. bring the fire that comes with it as well. There's mm. so much inside of you that you can bring up that many women that are coming after you, many women in the UK, in this land, need, mm. and beyond the UK borders as well. 
-hmm. they need that as well but at the same time god has also released something so heavy for the body of christ that i feel that needs to be shared in order for us to break past some limitations that we have as women mm -hmm. and that's why i called it woman to woman you. you know there we have what i will be speaking about maybe mm -hmm. i don't know if i should say my title <laughs> but there's some we know we've got some cleaning up to do some tidying up to do to get us to that place that we need to to be at the yeah. end of the day we call this place the united kingdom mm, i yeah. think that just gives a little yeah, bit of a surface clue. touch yeah. you know we're the united kingdom if we really are going to be that united kingdom then we need to be also united in the kingdom of the body yeah. of christ which is the kingdom pretty mm. much you know so there's work to be done in that area in order for us to break that small limitation mm. that we have as women in the body of Christ. Mm. Some uprooting and digging, mm. you know, and then really refresh ourselves so we can receive this prayer and really be the most that God has called us to be mm. in amazing. our various offices that we've been amen. called to be in. Amen. I love that. That's amazing. The Golden Rule. Welcome back for another segment. I love <laughs> <laughs> What am <I> saying? <laughs> Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. Welcome back for another segment of The Golden Rule, where we discuss issues, dilemmas um, from around the globe, from other Christians just like you, who need an answer on whether or not there is a golden rule in this faith walk, or if there are any great areas. Today, we have a dilemma from a married lady who says, I'm not sure how I feel about it, but we don't want children yet. Is it okay? in any circumstance for me to take birth control pills or the morning after pill. Mm -hmm. What do we think? Mm -hmm. This is a married couple. Mm -hmm. So they're not having a legal sense. Mm -hmm. This is <laughs> lawful <laughs> sense. I don't, I, don't, I don't get what is wrong if both couples consent. Mm -hmm. Okay. To so using birth control. Uh, I don't the morning after the pill, are we looking at them? Some people, are they're interchangeable. Mm -hmm. Morning after the pill is the same as getting, I don't know what you call it. Well, they're basically... Contraceptive, you mean? Is it the same? Well, it from is, your perspective, it's, it is, it is pretty much contraceptive. the same. It, it is the same. same. Yeah. So with the morning after pill that um, people, well, that people take, <laughs> <laughs> they are stopping the pregnancy before it happens. It's not that you're pregnant mm -hmm. and then no, you're now trying to kill the baby. stops it before yeah. it happens so it's okay. almost like a form of contraceptive anyway so taking it there's nothing wrong with that mm -hmm. if you want to stop it before it happens because the truth of the matter is the morning morning after pill will not have work if you take it and you're already pregnant yeah. because it's not an abortion pill yeah, I, I think morning after pill is, is just another form of you know the pill condom pill okay yeah. it, is condom. A, it is a contraceptive yeah okay. actually condom That's pill <laughs> That stops the taking place. Yeah. So the person won't fall pregnant. That stops it from taking place. Yes. So, everybody agree? I agree. I agree. I agree. I agree. Is there an ethical grey area there then? Mm -hmm. Because you know there are some Christians who believe... Oh, strong on that. Yeah, some Christians very much I believe, believe it's not for you to decide when you get pregnant. You are going to decide when you want to. I don't know. At least there's no mule. No. I'm, <laughs> I'm just thinking, like, why, why is it... Uh, this is just terrible. Oh my goodness, this is terrible. Um, there are, from <laughs> what I've learned and heard, there are several ways. There are medical ways that you can prevent mm -hmm. yourself from getting pregnant. Mm -hmm. There are other ways and there are other ways. <laughs> now, uh, <laughs> <laughs> we were, we were like, you know, as long, I think even for a woman as well, you can determine when you are um, ovulating or something. Mm -hmm. So you can decide not to do anything during that period so you don't get pregnant. I don't mm -hmm. think God is going to say, no, I'm going to change do it. Do it. And you know, it's still coming. Or, yeah, do you know what I mean? So, well, you, it seems like you do have that freedom. Mm -hmm. And as the expert has said, it doesn't, it doesn't kill if you like the pregnancy it prevents it from even happening so that's entirely different okay. that's why I, I, I believe in pleasurable intercourse as well mm -hmm. you know not every intercourse should lead to procreation as well yeah. Yeah. so I, I think I think you know family planning is divine mm -hmm. we, we have to realize that if the man and the woman decide not to have babies for now it's, it's, it's absolutely fine when they're ready mm -hmm. yeah, it's, Bible speaks about you know can the cost you know you can't see a man who has no no money no nothing and then wants to start raising a family you know mm -hmm. you have to use Sense, 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 sense. 
sense, sense in his thing. <laughs> I think some people feel that they're stopping the plan of God. Yeah. Um, because God has given you these gifts and you're now trying to stop that from happening. So they don't believe that you should use contraception. And I think this is where the angle that they're coming from, that don't use it at all. That why would you stop what God is giving to you naturally? Mm -hmm. Allow it to just happen. And that's why you find people born in, born in, born in, 12 kids, nine kids. (laughs) Can you really stop the plan of God? I heard a really ridiculous story that somebody was born with a abortion pill in the hand. (laughs) Well, if you're taking the morning after pill, mm. you've not even received the gift of God yet, so you're still sick. <laughs> That's because you're yeah. taking it to stop it now. Yeah, but you've not received it, so you're not rejecting oh, it. Lord. But I hear that though. The, well, if it's God's plan, it will happen exactly. anyway. So even if you take away after the right, that's what you're saying. The issue is why some people have actually fallen pregnant, even with the morning after the And even mm-hmm. with the morning after the With the nature of God, God is not a dictator. Yeah. God wants participation. It's not a God that enforces his will and says, You must get pregnant. Have yeah. that one already? Yeah, so yeah. We, we need to see God as not one monster in heaven that says, This must happen. No, yeah. He allows us to participate in that. Trinitarian fellowship. Mm-hmm. I don't want a child now. I want to enjoy my spouse for such and such a time. Mm-hmm. He understands that. I think it's a, it's an, I call it hyper conservative orthodox narrative yeah. that makes it look like, well, God is so stern. I'm mm-hmm. going to give you a baby now. No, no, we need to come into that space that where God wants us to participate with what He's doing. If I don't want a child now with my partner, mm-hmm. we say, well, no, let's make family planning, okay? In such and such a time, we're going to have it. And God understands. Mm-hmm. God is the one who gives babies. God, trust me. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you might be doing skin to skin. And not pulling out and doing raw, 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 and the baby will not come. So <laughs> And that's the truth. So God will do what God will do. Can we, liken it, can we also liken it to a couple who, like, for example, look at Hannah. She really wanted a baby mm. now, now, now. Like, it has to be now. But yeah, God said no. God time. literally shut the womb. But if, if it was nowadays and she had gone to do IVF, mm. she had gone to do this and gone to do that, is that in the will of God? Mm. Because to us, it's natural. Mm. So I think it's, that's another way to look at it. And I yeah. think, like we rightly said, when God says this, yes, if you like, go and do whatever. Yeah. Wear a chastity. Is yeah. it a chastity yeah. belt? Yeah. If you like, God will find your way. Find a way. That's the name of the section. The Lord has done it finally. <laughs> finally, finally, finally. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I love it. I've always, I always wondered that, like coming from the world into faith, mm. you hear. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's Satan and his agenda or what. But <laughs> for a non-believer. The things you hear about Christians are never moderate. It's always extreme mm. all the time. That's the most prevalent narrative, the most extreme mm. narrative. So coming into Christ, there were so many things I had to unlearn and like think twice about. Me too, I thought, oh, when I'm married, I cannot use contraception again. Mm. It was like maybe like three, four years deep when I realized, you know, by hearing wisdom, ah, that's not exactly, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Sorry, this is that's not bit, Jesus. It's a bit crazy. Like, who wants to have like 12 children. children. I mean, maybe there are people out there that want to. I mean, that was... Um, yeah, there are. <laughs> that was not going out to in this day and age, they really are. They're, they're they're like, they come on this crazy. Yeah. I, I can't mention any names, but there's a very popular family on the ground that born. They born a child every year. Every oh, single year. I know. I'm a big family, yeah. and everyone's always in the comments cussing them. I know, out cussing them because they're like you're you're a burden to the system. Yeah. Like, how are you feeding these kids yeah. and everything? You're relying on benefits. You're taking yeah, yeah. on social security and stuff and all that stuff to feed these children because mm-hmm. really they're not working. Yeah. But they're relying on sponsors. They're social relying on social media. Watch why the next thing that will come out is social media. And their stance is that we are Christian because they're doing it from a Christian stance and yeah. we don't believe in using contraceptive. Yeah. So I will allow my body to do naturally what God wants it to wow. do, what it's designed to do. So every year, or every couple of nine, every, after every child, <laughs> <shop, laughs> she's pregnant again, again That's and again. Bad. And even some of them, she's lost along the way, but still keeps going. What? She's even had miscarriages and still is going. Still going out. When social media okay. goes down, you will you should you will hit that maybe still go and this is this family is very well known. Wow. Till today they're still they take that I, 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 I think I think <laughs> we yeah, I don't want to see what I want to say on TV. Why? Because I think Christians need sense. 
Mm. Some things need spiritual discipline. Some things yeah. need common sense. Mm -hmm. It is common sense that tells you that this is enough. Yeah. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, you're going to end up having a doctor and a criminal. Yeah. Yes, for the sake of probably a lot of children, you either end up having an accountant and a thief and a prostitute. <laughs> because how do you manage 15 kids? It's true. Or more, how, how, it, it doesn't make sense. It, 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 it doesn't make sense. There's only two of you in the house. And, and I feel like, sense. sorry to add to that, it's like a lot of us do a lot of thinking for God and it's weird to me. But even relate it to the Bible. Like, Abraham and Sarah knew they would have a child. God had already, you know, that was signed to right. self deliver. They now went to go and find that guy. Why? Because they decided that they yeah. wanted to start thinking for God. That's now true. we have generations of yeah. warfare yeah. simply because of that intervention or again, wow. thinking so for God. So, yeah. Someone, yeah. Even, someone <laughs> even shared with me actually a couple of months ago and told me with themselves that their friend has said to them that they're looking forward to get married so that they can just literally have to fulfill their purpose which they believe is just to have children uh -huh. they're going to yeah, stop the working purpose. they're going to stop working uh -huh. and all they want to do is just born uh -huh. and that's what they've been called to do I didn't, I didn't have anybody yeah, no, that's, that's what entire that's what the entire no, no, that's no, what no, 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 and no, no, again they're Christian but they're strong on that stance oh. that that is what I know I'm called to do I'm not meant to work I'm not meant to do what I'm doing so I'm just waiting for God to send my spouse once I have that I hear that I want to do it you don't want to work that's why you don't want to work why is it irritating it's irritating this all this all madness. It doesn't make sense. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's actually and they put that said that that's what the Bible has designed us for. Yeah, Where? Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I guess I multiply the Adamic covenant. Which Bible is that quite strong on that? Some people that's cherry picking. Yeah. That's it absolutely is. cherry picking. As in I don't understand. You didn't read the Bible front uh, of uh, cover to cover. cover like, that's why they, they missed some bit. Wait, it just doesn't make sense. Things. They think it's biblical. Women yeah, so they believe then. that the woman is not meant to work. Oh. So when they get married, the husband will be the provider. I don't need to go and work. I just need to give children. Does this say Do you realize that we are living in a dispensation that is not Jewish? We are living yeah, in, this, in this dispensation. We are not in some 5000 BC. Yeah. We are living in a day and age where things are changed. That what God wrote to the nation of Israel was for a people, for a nation. We are the ecclesia, we are the church. Mm -hmm. and, and trust me, in the day and age that we live today, with the evolving world we, we live today, you're telling me that you don't want to work, you want just want to be popping like a rabbit, yeah. and your husband should be working. Yeah. I, I don't get it. And then, is it not the Proverbs 31 woman that uh, is actually gets some early she, she in the Old Testament? Testament. Uh, yeah. you even, in fact, one day I was reading Proverbs 31, I was thinking, ah, so what was this woman's husband doing? Because it seems like he always made his mind up and putting up there. That's all he did, was rise up and put up against your example. Because a woman who, who stood out. How about, what's her name? Is it she, Shira? Shira? I can't remember mm. whose daughter she was. Um, but she was a woman who laid foundations, who built a city or cities. Like, this is what the Bible says, but we know absolutely nothing else about this woman. So how can you say that my purpose is to pop, pop babies? Uh, if, some of us should be praying. Can I say my purpose is to pop ladies? If God decides that he's going to close your womb because of that statement, no, don't do that. Don't limit yourself to, to that. You don't know what to do. <laughs> Like, if you watch that movie, Gremlins, when they pour water yeah, out. Yeah, and they go, <laughs> <laughs> what is that? Stop it. Yeah. I love that. You heard well, your purpose is not to pop. Okay. Are you pretty cool? <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, I love that one. I think there's some pretty strong stances and some pretty strong examples there. Um, and I hope that sets some people free as well. If you've been bound up in, you must not use contraception and that's kept you from getting married and it's kept you from wanting to have sex. You heard it here first. If you're, you're married. If you're married. <laughs> I was about to say, yeah. <laughs> if you are married, your purpose is not to pop in the name of Jesus. And uh, the uh, and it's also that, you know, let, let's, let's get it straight. Sex is meant to be enjoyed, not just for procreation. God yeah. wants to uh -huh. enjoy uh, sex, sexual intercourse with your partner, if you're yeah. mar married, of course. You know, because this whole narrative of just pop, 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 pop means that I'm just, you know, uh, just a machine, you know, popping, <laughs> popping, popping. I'm not enjoying the pleasure that comes with that. So we need to realize that God made sex enjoyable. 
and as a couple, you need to enjoy sex without thinking of having on that man, man. I mean, these are good things, though. <laughs> Ladies are good. But you don't become thinking of having, you know, uh, yeah, yeah, babies, yeah. you know, enjoy your sexual relations, mm. relationship, and when God allows it, He allows it. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Kilo what's that? I was saying, you heard? <laughs> okay. <laughs> But in one way, doesn't that also, as a woman, does that not make you feel like you're being objectified? Like, mm. if your husband only wants to release himself on you, yeah. and then you just go, no, I don't, but, ugh, you can't carry a child for nine months and go through all that madness. Yeah, and then now, exactly, now from this ages of one to minimum, minimum nowadays is like 18, 17, that child is your responsibility. Mm. Who wants that? Yeah. We're in a new age, like Apostle said, and we're in an absolute new age. How do you have time to raise that many kids in yes. this day yeah. and age? You have to work as well. Well. broke pocket. I don't yeah. understand. Okay. Feeding two kids is difficult already. Two kids in three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, no, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys, thank you for joining us again. This has been The Golden Rule. This is the segment of the show where we help you refine yourself as pure gold by going through questions about your faith that could be grey areas. We'll be back in next week in our next episode for another The Golden Rule. Thank you. Flames Games. Hi guys and welcome back to another segment of Flames Games. We're back with our amazing contestants, PTG. Woo woo! Mr. Amanda, the reigning champion. That's right. The Apostle Oscar wow. Bobardi. <laughs> and the Dr. Emmanuel. <laughs> Not squeak speaker. <laughs> this time we are excited. This is another quick fire game. The name of this game is Three Second Bible Trivia. Ah, so, yeah, you have well, three seconds to answer <laughs> these questions. Three questions each about the Bible. The reigning champion will be the one who gets the most answers right. You're not doing okay. five or ten. It okay. was three I'm questions. It's also allowed to be in this game. Three, it's three this. seconds. That's sufficiently difficult for yeah. anybody to get. That's all right. Then. Sufficiently yeah. difficult. So that's, right. that's true, but this is di different difficulty. Yeah, exactly. Let me yeah. yeah. so yeah. 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 start Amanda and worship songs then. What? Okay. Hey, DJ, okay. your worship songs. You and worship songs. You're P you guys are PKs. No, so we'll, we'll get it. We'll get it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now that we've all decided that the game is fine, let's get into it. Hadassa is going to ask them three questions each, and they're going to have three seconds. I'm going to hold my fingers up to you. You are our accountability partners. And we will time each person. Who would like to go up first? Not me. At all. I will volunteer. Yeah. We love it. Order. We love it. I already know I'm out. <laughs> Coming in. Anyway, let's see. Okay. Right. First question. What was the original Hebrew name of the prophet Daniel? Mubilala. <laughs> 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 because that one is. <laughs> But that's not his original Hebrew name. That's the name that Nebuchadnezzar gave him. Yeah, his yeah. original Hebrew yeah. name. That's true, actually. Why did it? Yeah. Oh! Oh! Yeah. All right, that was the practice round. I'm putting that in the bloopers. I can't wait. Okay, and three, two, one. Right, next question. In which book of the Bible do we find the story of Balaam and his talking donkey? Oh, Jesus is Lord. Hey. Hi. Uh-uh. It's been a while. <laughs> I think I should not be able to put myself first. Right. <laughs> okay. And, and next question. Another question for PTG. <laughs> what are the names of the two spies who brought back a positive oh, report from the promised <laughs> land? Last question. You still got a chance to collect a point. Okay. Last question. I can't remember. Joshua. Ah, hey, Joshua, can they? No, we're not. We're not doing that. The last one. Okay, it's frozen right now. This is the last question for PTG. Wait, we don't get the same question. No. Ah, this is that all. This. This is the last question for PTG to redeem herself. 
Will she be able to answer the question? Sounds like a right. right. <laughs> what was the name of Moses' wife? Yeah. <laughs> you can't put this to the line. Neck. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> I knew that one. I'll do one fast as well. Isn't that good? <laughs> okay, we're we recording. Okay, next up we have Apostle Oscar Gobardia. Now, if you know Apostle Oscar Gobardia, this is going to be very so easy to interesting. Give him he knows the Bible. We're about like to watch a master man. work. Watch and see. I'm going to mess up. Okay, okay. let's go. First question, Hannah. Right, first question for Apostle. Who was the first king of Israel? Can you so, imagine? What is going to be done? Jesus. Ask him the question. Wait. No, see. I'm asking the question. What, so. what, what was in Jeremiah? No, no, no. What hey, was in Jeremiah? You see this? Sabotage. Second question. Who is the first king of Israel? Second question for Apostle. In the book of Revelation, how many churches of Asia are addressed in the book of Revelation? Come on, come on. Third question. Which prophet confronted King David about his sin with Bathsheba? What is this? Oh, Shoot this oh, that's really that's easy. Easy. Last second. I'm gonna get it, Nathan. I'm gonna get it. Let's go, Nathan. Okay. I'm scared, bro. Don't be scared. I think I get zero points. <laughs> PG. <laughs> no, 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 that PTG is the one that's questionable. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, well, my heart is going to be Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> All right, next up we have Minister Amanda. We have Faith again. Hadassah. Oh, the first thing we need is <laughs> more than most that sits <laughs> Can we have the first question, please? Right, let's get the question rolling. First question for Minister Amanda. Jesus, help me. <laughs> what was the name of Abraham's second wife? Ooh. Um, begins with a K. Oh, I forgot. Uh, no, 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 hold on. I uh, can't remember. Three seconds. Three seconds. Ketera. Ketera. That's right. At least you give me half your point. She said I had K. <laughs> Second question. Right. Who was the mother of Samuel, the prophet? Oh. Uh, the Hannah. Yes. yes! Ding! What do you mean? Why is that struggle? We were talking about her earlier. Yeah, that's why I was crying. Yeah. 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 Fear is a naughty like... person. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. Third and final uh, question uh, from Minister Amanda. Will she get it? What Old Testament prophet was taken up to heaven in a whirlwind? Come Elijah. On. Come on. Yep. Come on, you must be <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 Now it's time for it Dr. Emmanuel. We have faith again. Hadassah hitting with the first question. Right. First question. I'm not allowed to watch Netflix anymore. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Oh, is good, I mean. First question for Dr. In which city were Jesus' disciples first called Christians? Hey. Oh. Okay. 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 Yep. Okay. Hey. Let's go. You got it. Right. You got it. <laughs> Was a tax collector oh, before following Jesus. Matthew. Yeah, okay. yeah. Matthew. 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 Not even before the one. <laughs> 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 <That's laughs> <okay. laughs> <Matthew. laughs> right. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I have to edit that out. Third and final question. question. So. What? Are the names of the twin sons of Isaac and Rebecca? Uh, Isaac and Rebecca. Uh-uh. Uh, uh, 
Rebecca. Yeah. Check it with this His wife is breakfast. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Can I get a I'm just saying, for the integrity of the games, Man. you have to think about the viewers. You're there, you're asking him um, who's the first king of Israel. Then they too they'll be looking at ah, ah. <laughs> us. You should be asking him what was the John Snow when he was right there. Right there. <laughs> That's what you're saying. Then you can do a head to head round of a puzzle. That's right. No, it's not about me. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> Two hours later. Who won the last session? Who won? Who won? Who won? What question can you ask? Not even last session. I know a question. Who won the last session? Who won? No, the first one. I'm asking you a question. Who unwrapped? One eternity later. Who won the Who won the first Who won the first game? With that being said, <laughs> the winner of episode two of the Flames Games, it Apostle Hotsukaya. Thank you for joining us for Fired Up. We'll see you next Wednesday at seven for the next episode. <laughs> All the burning one. All the burning one. All the burning one.